Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. This week we read Parasha Kitavo. We're uh, getting closer to finishing the book of the Varim and uh, entering the, the new year with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Um, and we're working hard on our teshuva, on getting closer to God, on working with our relationship with Hashem, with others and with ourselves right now. This is what we should all be doing and taking stock of our lives, of our year. The last year has been an epic year. It's, it's not a year that's gonna be like this every year. And um, for some it has been very bad, for others it has been awakening, it's a time of awakening and, and, um, and going back to their true essence. And um, it's been, uh, I would say, it's one of the most interesting years of my life in any way, in the, in the good that we perceive as good and in the, in the pain that we perceive as pain. But nevertheless, it's been a year of, um, of great opportunities to connect to Hashem and to really appreciate who He is. So this week's parasha, we read parasha Kitavo. And Parashat Kitabo begins with the wonderful and great mitzvah of Bikurim. And Bikurim is a mitzvah that teaches us profound lessons. It's a mitzvah in which the Jewish farmer, once he entered the, the land of Israel, he would take the first of his fruits, the, the choicest of his fruits, he would put them in a basket, basket and take them to the Beit HaMikdash and give them to the Kohen. So this is a mitzvah of Bikurim. Today we don't do it because we were in exile and um, people who are not farmers were not, uh, they didn't have to do this mitzvah. But nevertheless, it's a mitzvah that is applied to every person at every moment in their lives, no matter what they do, if they're a, 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 a homemaker, if they're a CEO in a company, if they're a teacher in a school, Whatever your life is, wherever you are, whatever you do in your life, the spiritual concept of the mitzvah of Bikurim, it, it can always be applied. So it also give us, gives us profound lessons for our life, and it's very appropriate for this time of the year. And, uh, and we see here that the Torah tells us that after we conquer the land of Eretz Israel, and a portion is among the, the tribes, we are to bring this Bikurim to the temple. And uh, Rashi explains that by bringing the Bikurim, we, we declare to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to Hashem, what we're doing is what we're telling God, that we are not ungrateful people. This is the whole concept of Bikurim. And, um, and really it's what sets a Jew apart. Like the, the Jew, the word Jew, comes from the word Yehudi, which comes from the word Yehuda, the name Yehuda. When Yehuda was born, Leah proclaimed to Hashem, thank you Hashem, because you have given me more than that should have been given to me. So this concept of gratefulness really permeates the, the life of a Jew from the minute he wakes up till the minute he goes to sleep. Like the first thing we do when we wake up in the morning is say, Thank you, Hashem, that I opened my eyes today and that my soul is inside of my body and that you didn't put someone else's soul inside of my body and that you took care of me during the night. So this concept of gratitude really is embedded inside of us. The, the whole concept of brahas, of doing blessings, we have to do at least a hundred blessings a day, really is to have these words of thank you, Hashem, in our lips at every moment of our lives. So we, when we um, do, when we are grateful people, when we're acknowledging where our goodness comes from, which comes from Hashem, then we appreciate the bounty that He has given us. So it's not only to be grateful to, for what He gives us, but it's also to acknowledge and appreciate everything he gives us. So, and then we say the, the Bidui of Bikurim, we ask forgiveness in which we acknowledge not only the Hesed Hashem has shown us by giving us abundant harvest, but also the kindness he has uh, shown us throughout the years. So sometimes in life, God does kindness to us and we don't really appreciate it. We don't really see it. 
But in reality, sometimes we look back and we see, oh wow, look what God did for me. This, it's unbelievable. I heard a story today of Charlie Harari, which really encapsulates this uh, message in which he tells the story of a man that was living in Poland during the 30s. And for him to make money was very difficult. He couldn't make a cent. The guy tried to work here, tried to work there. He couldn't find a job anywhere. He couldn't make any parnasa. And uh, he felt horrible because every time he came home, he had nothing to give his wife. And the family was suffering uh, terribly. So a friend told him, you know, you should go to America. There's a lot of opportunity there. You should go for a year and work for a year and then come back. You're gonna have money for five years. And so Rosh Hashanah came and this man came and he started praying in Rosh Hashanah, heartfelt prayer to God that please, please God send me Parnassa. I really don't want to go to America. I really don't want to be away from my family. I want to be here. I want to work here. I don't want to go there. And um, eh, after Rosh Hashanah, he tried looking for a job. Again, a month went by, two months went by, nothing, nothing, nothing. And they were dying of hunger. So he went to his rabbi and he says, what should I do? My friend told me that I should go to America and work for a year there, that I'm gonna find a job and I'm gonna be able to come back and have money for a few years. So the rabbi says, eh, you should go to America but you should never forget that everything that happens to you is for the good. Gamzu letova. This is also good. So he told him the famous story of Rabbi Akiva, that Rabbi Akiva went to a town and uh, he asked if he could be sheltered in that town that night and it happened to be that they said no way. So he had to go to the forest and he had a, a rooster, a cat, a candle and a, and a donkey. And he came to the forest and suddenly the wind came and blew out his, his candle and he was in complete darkness and he said, okay, this is for the good, this is also good. And then the cat was hungry and ate the rooster. And he said, okay, this is also for the good. And then a fox came and ate the donkey. And he said, okay, this is also for the good. And so the next day, when the day came, he went back to the town because he had nothing. He, he had been, like, everything was gone. So he went back to the town to see if someone could help him out. And when he came down to the town, he saw that that night before, thieves had come to the town and they had killed everybody in the town. So here you see that something that looks so bad, at the end of the day, it was good. So the rabbi said to this man, he says, so remember in America, many things are gonna happen to you. You're gonna go through a lot of stuff. Never forget to, to look at everything and say this is also for the good. And so he came to America. The first thing he did was look for a synagogue. He went to a synagogue and uh, the rabbi let him sleep there and the people of the shul would bring him food. And uh, eventually he found a job with a non-Jewish man selling, um, selling uh, furniture. So he started selling furniture uh, in this man's business and he was a very good salesman and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the boss saw, saw his capacities and he said to him, you know what, you should be my partner. I'm gonna make you my partner. You should be my partner. And the way you pay me is any, every extra that we make during the month, you, we give it, to the, we give it to, the, to the store and that way we, we grow the business. And so it happened that a year later, the business had grown tremendously. It was very, very successful. And when he was ready to go back to Poland, he received a telegram saying that his father had passed away. So he, he didn't have time to go and say goodbye to his father. He didn't have time to go back and bury his father. He went to the rabbi, said, what should I do? So the rabbi says, well, first of all, you should sit down and do Shiva. You should sit and do Shiva. The morning period when, when uh, a close relative dies, you should not go on a boat these days. You should sit Shiva. So he sat Shiva and, the, and the, the partner came to him those days and he says, you know, I understand you're sitting Shiva, your, your father passed away, I'm so sorry. But you know what, there's an opportunity in the business right now, very big, that the, we need a loan from the bank and I need you so, to sign this paper. So the bank would give us a loan. 
and um, so he said but do we have to do it now I'm sitting Shiva wait till I'm I'm done it's a few more days he says no 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 it has to be now it has to be now so he was like so sad he was away he was alone he was sitting Shiva alone he signed the paper he trusted his partner when he got out, out of the Shiva he went to the store and he sees that the store is locked it's the middle of the day and he says this is so strange why is this store locked so he looks he's looking and looking and he looks and there's no furniture inside the store so he says oh this is strange and he goes to the bank and he had palpitations he felt that something was wrong so he comes to the bank and he tells the girl you know I want to take out all the money from my account so the girl looks and he says uh, I'm sorry there's no money in your account he says how can there be no money in my account he says yeah there's no money in your account so he says there has to be a mistake and she says no your partner came last week with a paper where you signed that you allowed him to take all the money out of your account so he realized that this partner had stolen from him but he remembered the story of the of the of the of the rabbi in Poland and he says okay this is for the good this is for the good this is for the good so now he has no money to go back to Poland he's stuck in New York he has nothing to do and uh, someone in the synagogue tells him you know I can give you a job and you know what if you stay one more year in in, in New York you can become a citizen of the United States so you might as well work for another year in a year you'll, you'll have the money to go back and, and before you go you become a citizen of this great nation so he did as, the, as this man told him a year went by he became a, a citizen of the US and he went back to Poland when he came back to Poland it was 1939 and when his town the Nazis had come and, and taken possession of the town and he saw this and he says this is not good this is really not good and when things started getting fired up and things were going not well he realized someone told him but you're an American citizen you can get out of here in two minutes go to the consulate get uh, get a um, passport for all your family and get out of here so that's what he did they came to America and they were saved from the Holocaust so what the story says is like Hashem not always answers us the way we want imagine if in that Rosh Hashanah Hashem would find would have find him a job in Poland and he would have stayed home and he would have said yes stay here you got a job imagine if that uh, partner didn't steal from him he would have gone back with a lot of money and he would have been stuck there everything in our life really Baruch Hashem Baruch Hashem that's all that can come out of our mouth all day this is good this is for the good this pandemic yeah it's very tough it's very hard but you know what it's for the good and that's the way that we have to look at our lives this is one of the lessons of the Bikurim of taking the best of us and giving it to Hashem because this is the way in which we can thank God for all our bounty this is the way in which we can thank God for everything we, he does for us and we say that sometimes living it uh, forward we cannot see the goodness but sometimes looking back we can see the goodness of God and that's why when 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 the, the Pasuk talks about this Bikurim it tells us to remember the, the Aramean man Lavan who was the father-in-law of uh, Jacob and the things he wanted to do to him his schemes against Jacob and that they were foiled he could not do not harm him and we recall our descent into Mizraim and we recall that Hashem took us out of Egypt and the divine gift of the Holy Land that he gave us and 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 that's what what life is all about Hashem gives us everything we have he does everything for us so the Sepharim HaKadosh points out that the Reishis in this context means not only to be to to do, give the first of the fruits but the best of your fruits the choicest of your fruits so the um, rabbi uh, benjamin eisenberger he explains that the mitzvot provide for us a opportunity of the vehicles of connection of god and i've learned this in many different sources uh, Ramhal talks about it in the book uh, Dere Hashem the path of God 
it says that the, 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 the reason Hashem created the world is to give us the gift of the vacus, of connection to Him. And how do we achieve this? By perfection. By, being, by perfecting ourselves, by every day being better than yesterday. And so he says that this very special mitzvah of Bikurim, uh, the Midrash teaches us, that for this mitzvah alone it would have been worth, worthwhile to bring uh, the, 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 the Klal Israel into Eretz Israel. Moreover, Rashi, in this first Pasuk in the Torah, brings the words of Hazal, of our sages, that the world was created because of the mitzvah of Bikurim. This is the reason Hashem created the world. So we can take the best of us and give it to God. And that's what the Ramhal is saying. He, gave, he made the world so we can connect to Hashem by perfection. What is perfection? We can never become like God. We can never be perfect beings. But we can always choose to do the best. We can always choose to rise above everything, everything around us, and be the best person we can be at that moment. And that's all Hashem asks. And this is, in a way, giving Bikurim to God. This is giving to God the choices of ourselves. So what, what is so special, special about Bikurim that it was worthwhile to create the whole world for this? The Gemara states that the ownership of the physical world eh, um, uh, the, 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 the physical world was given to us. So Hashem gave us the first physical world. On the other hand, the Pasuk says, the upper worlds belong to God, and He gave the earth to mankind. And on the other hand, there is another Pasuk that says, the earth and all it contains belong to Hashem. So Hassan resolves this discrepancy. What does he say? He tells us that the one pasuk pertains to before a person makes a braha, before he partakes of anything of the world. You know, the material world, uh, Hashem created the material world. So everything belongs to him. Your house belongs to him, your, your clothes belong to him, your money belongs to him, your car belongs to him. Everything belongs to him. But when a person makes a blessing, when a person elevates the material world, then Hashem makes the material yours. That's what it means. So Hashem grants us ownership of the physical world only after we make a braha, only after we elevate it. And the braha connects the pleasure we derive from the physical world to Hashem and thereby it elevates it. So, here, Rabbi Eisenberger, is tell, he, he continues to tell us, to teach us, that the mitzvah is to come to recognition, is to bring to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to bring to Hashem, the reshis. The reshis is the choices, the best, the first of everything we do in this world. This is our job in this world. It's, that's the way we recognize the goodness that God gives us. So you go to work, you make $5,000 this month, or $500,000 this month. The Bikurim, the Rashis, is take out the best part of what you make, the first of what you make, and give it for Sedaka. This is what it means. This is what it means that we connect to God. This is the only way we can connect to God, is through the mitzvot. And to do them joyfully with gratefulness and joy and love of God. So as we say in our, in our prayers, the earth is full of your possessions. And the, and the Sefarim HaKedoshim interpro, interpro, interpret this word, Kinoineha, possessions, acquiring Hashem, so to speak. The earth is full of opportunity to connect to God. Everything in our lives is an opportunity to connect to God. Everything, every decision you make in your life is an opportunity for you to connect to God. So everything that exists in the world, everything that happens in it, presents us with the opportunities to connect, to have the vehicles, to be connected, to grab ourselves from Hashem. And if we give Hashem the reshis of our efforts, if we take the first and choices of our possessions, our strengths, our talents, eh, our character, our time, everything, everything we possess, we elevate our existence and forge a strong bond with God. Eh, 
So the spirit of the mitzvah of Bikurim is not limited only to the farmers that live in the land of Israel in the times of the temple. It's relevant to all of us. It's relevant to all of us. So, the, so how do we do this? Imagine that you're sitting in a plane and you choose a kosher meal and you're gonna see that the person sitting next to you is, is not eating a kosher meal. He's not a Jew. He doesn't need to eat kosher. What does he do? He opens, he unwraps everything very fast and he eats, right? But a Jew is more complicated. It's wrapped and double wrapped and triple wrapped. You have to cut through it. You have to let the steam come out so you don't get burned. So when, once you get it out, then you see that you have a, a, a roll, a bread roll, that you're wondering, is it, is it hamotzi, is it mezono? Do I have to do this blessing? Do I have to do that blessing? What blessing should I do? You know what, I'm gonna wash, I'm gonna do the blessing. And it takes a few minutes until you can sit down and eat your meal. It doesn't happen in one minute. This is what it means, the Bikurim. This is the Rashis. This is to give the best of you. It's when you stop for one minute and you do what Hashem wants you to do. And you're not rushing to do what your animalistic instinct is rushing you to do. Shabbat meal is a perfect example. The, the whole house smells like, like paradise the whole day. The bread is baking, the food is cooking. But yeah, we're not sitting and eating it right away. We have the, the, usually in normal times, the man go to the synagogue till he comes from the synagogue, till the guests arrive. Then you have to do, uh, you have to sing Shalom Alehem. Then you have to do the, the Ashes Ha'il, the, 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 the prayer for the wife. The, then you have to wash, you bless your children, then you wash for bread, and then, it, uh, no, then you, you do kiddush, the wine, then you wash for bread, and then you can sit down and eat. It takes like half an hour more. So this is what it, the, this, the, the, the idea of Bikurim means. This is what it means, is that you don't rush for your self-serving purposes. You stop, you give the first of everything in your life to God. You stop and you give to him. And that's what, uh, what this parasha really is teaching us, this concept of giving first to Hashem. And, um, and, and that's what life is all about. And that's how you forge a relationship with God. He wants to be close to us. He wants to have us next to him. But the way in which you get close to someone is by showing the love. If you don't show the love, then it doesn't matter how much he gives to you, how much bounty and goodness he gives to you in your life, but you're never going to be uh, cognizant of where things come from. You're never going to be able to have a connection. So I wish you a blessed week, a healthy week, and remember, live a little higher. Thank you.